everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Alright, so if you could tell from the title of this video, this is going to be a story time on how I got one of my most clingiest motherfucking exes kicked out of his house. So let's just get right into it because I can make this video like an hour long if I really sit here and talk. So, anyway, to give you guys a little bit of backstory, his grandma and my stepmom worked in the same um, nursing home. And his he had gotten into some trouble and he was hanging out with like the wrong crowd and so he was living with his sister um we're gonna call him joseph for the sake of this video um but yeah so joseph was living with his sister because his living environment with his mom was not very good and it wasn't very you know wasn't like safe and all that kind of stuff so his sister and her husband had agreed to let him live with them just as long as you know he stayed out of trouble got good grades all that kind of stuff um so he was living with them and they wanted him to be around good people who weren't doing drugs, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so his grandma knew of me just through my stepmom and she had met me a few times when I went to the nursing home with my stepmom to like give the residents their like Christmas gifts and stuff like that. So she like knew that I was like a good girl, which really I wasn't that great of, like I wasn't like a good girl, um, but you know, I was... My parents thought I was a good girl and that's what matters when you're that age. So if I didn't say this already, this was my freshman year of high school, so I was in ninth grade. So like he was getting like pressured to talk to me and I mean I don't know if he really initially liked me but I think eventually he really like liked me. So he was like talking to me and stuff and I wasn't necessarily like into him but I did like that he was Native American because he was Native American as well and in that area it was a primarily white town that we lived in um I mean there was like you know people of color and stuff like that there but it was primarily white and so for them for there to be like another Native American there that was like legit Native American I thought was pretty cool and so that's pretty much why I dated him which I mean I only dated two Native American guys in my life like that were like actually Native American and you know not like white Cherokee or I'm not actually that Cherokee people but you guys don't want to talk about so, which the other guy that I dated, he was actually from my tribe, which like I thought like was really cool. Um, but then he ended up being a gang member, so like, that did not work out. But that's like a different story. But anyway, so eventually like I go out with this kid, call him Joseph, and right off the bat, he is the clingiest person ever. I mean the clingiest. He's constantly texting me, calling me. Where am I? What am I doing? Follow me around like the halls and school and stuff like that. Like, he would be like 10 minutes late to class because he was like stalking me basically. Like it was just crazy. Um, <laughs> like no. And like I mean within a week of us dating he was like oh I love you. I want to be with you forever. Blah blah. Look. I'm not like a cold hearted bitch but like we were dating for like a week. Like are you fucking kidding me? I mean it was probably less than a week <laughs> to be honest with you. But yeah, he was just so like clingy and like, ugh. and then like if he would see like a wreck and it wasn't, it didn't even have to be like the town that we lived in, but like the city that was near us, he would call me or text me to ask me if it was me, if I was alive, if I was okay. Like that's just too much. Like I don't, it's like he knew what kind of car my parents each had. He wasn't the brightest. <laughs> Let me fucking tell you that. He was not the brightest. I don't mean to sound like a bitch here, but he wasn't the brightest. So. Before I broke up with him, because I broke up with him pretty fucking fast. <laughs> um, oh, I'm horrible. But anyway, before I broke up with him, he had given me like a bracelet, I want to say a necklace, and a ring. Now, the ring didn't have any significant meaning. It wasn't promise ring or, you know, anything like that. It was just like a ring. I think he gave it for, to me for like our two-month anniversary or some stupid shit like that. I don't know. But, um, yeah, and so I broke up with him and... You know, I had planned on keeping all the jewelry that he had given me. I wasn't going to give it back to him. Are you fucking stupid? Like, no, I'm going to keep it. And he never asked for the jewelry back either. So it wasn't like he was trying to get the jewelry back. He just never asked me for it back. And so I, I was, whatever. And so I was just going to keep it. But after I broke it up with him, he was constantly texting me, so constantly calling me. And he was getting really possessive. Like, we, even if, like, we were dating, like, there was no, like, a guy should not get possessive. You know, no one should get, like, crazy possessive at all in a relationship. And especially if you're not even in the relationship with the person anymore. So it was really just getting tiresome on me. And I just like, I threw away the bracelet and the necklace. And I kept the ring because I liked how the ring looked. 
Um, it wasn't like a crazy fancy ring, but it was, I just liked how it looked. Um, I can't remember what color the stones were in it, but there was like three or four stones, and it was just like a simple, pretty ring, and I liked it. But anyway, so like I said, he never asked me for the jewelry back or anything like that. I just got fed up with him constantly like harassing me and stuff like that, so I threw away the jewelry. Well, one day my stepmom comes home from work, and she's visibly annoyed and, you know, kind of upset. And I'm like, you know, like, what's wrong? And she tells me that his grandma um, pulled her aside at work and asked her if he had given me any jewelry. And sorry, my hair's like being weird. And if he had given me any jewelry. And my son being the very honest person that she is was like, yeah, he gave her like a necklace, bracelet, and a ring. Now, the grandma didn't really care about the other two jewelry, but she cared about the ring. She was like, what does the ring look like? Blah, blah. My stepmom described it to her because, like, you know, I showed my stepmom, so she knew what it looked like. Well, then the grandma was very upset because that ring was hers. He had stolen the ring from her. I guess she had taken it off and he just went to her jewelry box and stole it. And, I mean, that's, like, fucked up. And I don't steal from your family, but especially don't steal from your grandma. Like, no. Um, but anyway, so... <laughs> She was really upset because the ring was really special to her. Each one of her children had pitched in to get her the ring. And the stones on the ring each symbolized her children, each one of her children. So she was visibly upset and, you know, she really wanted the ring back and she asked if I still had it. My stepmom knew that I had thrown away the other jewelry, but she didn't know if I threw away the ring. So she was very honest with the, you know, grandma. She was like, well, I know she threw away the other jewelry. There's a possibility she threw away the ring. But she's like, I will, you know, go home and I will talk to her and we'll see if we can find it. And the grandma said that, like, if I do have the ring, then obviously, like, you know, he had stolen it. And he will be not no longer welcome to live with his sister and the sister's husband. So my stepmom, you know, like, she, she tells me all this. And I, like, I cannot for life for me at this point remember if I threw away the ring or not. I, like, I felt like I hadn't. But, like, I went and looked where I normally had kept my jewelry and it was not there. So obviously I tell my stepmom, like, I don't really think I have it. You know, I'm like, and it was a weekend, so my stepmom didn't have to go to work, like, the next day. And, you know, she was like, well, just, like, over the weekend, can you please, like, look and everything. I'm like, yeah. And I looked and I looked and I could not fucking find this ring. And I felt really bad because I knew that that was the ring he had given me. And I, at this point, was really thinking I threw it away. So I felt really bad because, like, that ring meant a lot to the grandma. And so... Then it was probably the, it was the night before my stepmom had to go back to work. And I was in the shower and I got out of the shower, got dressed and everything. And I walked out and I went to the living room and my dad, my stepmom, my brother, they were all in there and they were talking. And they kind of stopped talking when I walked in. So I'm like, what's going on? Like, what happened? Because I can just see that my stepmom is like upset. She's very annoyed and a little pissed off. Well, Joseph, his sister had come to our house because she had picked me up and dropped him off a few times. So like she knew where we lived. And plus it's like a small town anyway. So she'd come over and she was asking about the ring, if he'd really given me a ring. And she was really rude and was really insinuating that I was lying about the ring whole situation. And she just wasn't really happy that I had broken up with this kid anyway. And she was really rude to my stepmom and she was like, well, do you have the ring? Like, just give it to me now if you actually have the ring. Like, why would we want to keep a ring that meant so much to this woman, his grandma, you know, that each one of her children had pitched in to give to her. Now, the sister was not one of the, like, the sister and the grandma, I don't think they're actually like, blood related. So she really didn't have any part in getting the ring to the grandma or for the grandma, you know what I mean? She wasn't one of the children, I guess, that helped buy the ring. So my, and at this point, like, I hadn't found the ring anyway, but my stepmom was, like, really uncomfortable with giving her the ring because... Who's to say that the sister wouldn't have taken the ring and, like, you know, said that she found it, like, you know, in the bathroom or, you know, somewhere like that and let him off easy. And plus my stepmom knew how much, like, harassment I was dealing with because of him. Because it wasn't just him that was bothering me, it was, like, his friends as well. Um, and so it was just a very, like, annoying situation. And so my stepmom was like, we don't have the ring, like, please leave. So the sister left and they're telling me all that and I just, like, cannot believe it and I'm just... So fed up and I'm just like in my mind I'm like God please just let me find this ring and like I swear this is a true thing right as soon as I was like in my mind because I went to my room at this point I was like God please just let me find this ring so we can get this over with I remembered where I had put the ring I didn't throw the ring away because I liked the ring it was a very simple ring but I really just liked it 
So I kept it and I just put it somewhere that I normally didn't put my jewelry. So I found the ring and so I gave it to my stepmom to give it to the grandma and the grandma was really happy but at the, it was a very bittersweet thing I guess because she knew that he took the ring at this point because how else would I have gotten the ring because I had never been over to the grandma's house. So it was a very like bittersweet thing uh, and the sister, um, from what I understand, the sister had really tried to get him to stay, um, but her husband was not tolerating that kind of shit at all and it kicked, kicked him out just right away. And so he had to go live with his mom again in a very bad situation, which I do feel bad that he had to go back to that bad situation because I have lived in very bad situations and environments and I get it. But also, I've never stolen from my grandma, you know? So I ended up getting him kicked out, essentially. Now, looking back on the whole thing now, I don't really feel too terribly bad about it because even though he was no longer going to my school, living in the same town, he would still harass me. Even to this day, I will get Facebook friend requests um, from him. And I automatically, if I don't automatically block the account, He'll message me and be like, are you going to accept me? Are you going to accept me? Or he'll or he'll still, fuck, and keep in mind, okay, I graduated high school three years ago, okay? And this happened when I, I was a freshman in high school, so it's been a very long time, okay? If I don't automatically block his account, he'll message me and ask me if I'm going to accept his friend request. Or he'll message me to let me know that he's dating so-and-so and how she's so much better than me. <laughs> like, the fuck? <laughs> like, I don't... It just doesn't make any sense to me. So yeah, to this day, I will still get friend requests from him, messages, all that kind of stuff. And I just have to block the account. And I've honestly probably blocked like 50 of his fucking accounts because he just makes them, makes them, makes them. It is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. But that is it for the story. I don't have anything else to add to it. Um, Yeah, I hope that you guys liked this video. If you want to see any of my other story time videos or any of my other videos, I have a lot of playlists linked down below that just have all those videos in it along with my social media if I can talk along with my social media that's down there as well that is it I love you all thank you so much for watching my video and hopefully you'll check out my next one